Hello, everybody, and welcome to another segment of the Masterpiece Lounge. I am your hostess, Chris Natha DeRozier, certified life coach, author, and speaker, and I am excited to be here with you once again. And today we have an incredible special guest by the name of Miss Courtney Elaine, and we're so excited to have her. Welcome, Courtney. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. We are so excited to have you here today. And so we wanted to definitely um, feature you here on the platform and just talk to you about all the amazing things that you have going on and also get to know you a little bit better as well. Okay. And so I love to ask all of my guests and I'll ask you as well. If you had to, for those of us living under a rock, if you had to really help us understand who you are, what you're about, how would you be able to articulate that? So who is Courtney Elaine? Uh, Courtney Elaine is sassy, imaginative, determined, a visionary, a wheelchair user, a survivor, a Christian, and a woman of integrity. I love it. I love it. So it sounds like you are every woman. So I love that. <laughs> Absolutely love that. And so you are also in the Houston area. I am as well. Yeah. My fellow Houston sister. H-Town. Holding it yes, down. Yes, H-Town in the building. <laughs> and so I wanted to ask you, because uh, we recently connected and you know, there was definitely something there and I wanted to know more. And so I'm glad we've been able to connect. And so you are also a photographer and a creative entrepreneur. And I love talking to fellow uh, creatives because I am one as well. And I feel like we have such an incredible mind, a way that we think our imagination does really awesome things. And so I wanted to ask you, as an entrepreneur, that a creative entrepreneur and a photographer, when did you first discover that you were even creative? When did you get that first understanding that, hey, you know, I see things differently or I have an eye for, for things in a, in a special way? Well, I've always loved um, art. So when I was very young, I was obsessed with crayons. So I loved coloring. I loved color pencils, loved school supplies. And it was just like an obsession of mine. So I would have coloring contests and things like things like that. So I think that was where I originally be began to see that I was creative. But it wasn't until um, I got older, maybe around, around 16, 17, that I began to really use my creativity as my voice. And um, I just felt like I wasn't being heard. So I began to use, express myself through art. So that's when I really realized how creative I was. I love that. And what type of art did you start to express yourself through? Well, photography has always been a part of my family. So it started with uh, photography. I was doing, um, got my first camera when I was like 17 years old. And so from there, I took photography courses and um, just kind of went from there. I also did like a lot of scrapbooking. So the scrapbooking helped me with graphic design. I had a natural eye for layouts, a natural eye for photography. And I just kind of combined those things together. I love that. So the, cre the creative side of you evolved over time. And mm -hmm. so you found things that uh, you connected with and then build on top of that and it became something even greater. And now you're this amazing photographer. And um, I have had the opportunity to check out a couple of your photography mm -hmm. work and I think it's absolutely fabulous. And so Thank I you. wanted to ask you how important is storytelling to you and how do you incorporate that into the photography work that you do? Um. Storytelling is extremely important because I feel like I need to be the, the narrator of my story. If I'm not, people will put two and two together and they will come to their own conclusion. And that conclusion could be one that's wrong. So I feel like it's my duty to narrate my story. So um, 
I've been very adamant about doing that. And um, I just feel like with photography, you could tell a story through one photo or a series of photographs and you can do, you can evoke people's um, emotions. You could tap into like their perspective and you can do all of that without even saying a word. And I think that that was one of the things that was really important to me because I had a time in my life where I didn't really like speaking up. So I used the art to do the speaking for me. So that that's what made it so important. I didn't want to speak. So it was like, okay, I take these pictures, I get out my perspective, and then you can look at my work. And from there, you have a perspective. Then if you ask me questions about it, I'm willing to talk. But beforehand, that's my way of getting it out. So, And I've used it um, storytelling throughout my life because um, I was injured when I was 16. I um, have a spinal cord injury and that makes me, uh, making me a wheelchair user. And so I remember being really young and being asked, well, how did you get injured? And when I would start telling people, they would automatically assume that I was injured in a drive-by shooting. And so I kind of got annoyed with the question, like, was it a drive-by? And I'm like, no, it was not a drive-by. So I thought that it would be nice for me to put those negative emotions into an exhibition. And so I came up with an exhibition called um, Drive-By Shooting. And from there, I started to really get into just expressing myself through the photography and telling stories through it. I love that. I love that. Taking what could be um, considered a negative and using mm -hmm. that very thing and saying, I am going to make this and turn it into a positive. Mm -hmm. um, that is awesome. And so you did mention um, that you have um, you had a childhood injury, um, which uh, as a result, you are now a wheelchair user. And if um, you're comfortable sharing, I'd love for you to kind of share a little bit of that testimony or that journey for us so we can understand that better how did that come to be how did that affect you throughout um, the last few years you know of you kind of becoming the amazing photographer that you are and just how does that affect you today well I was I was 16 years old and I was dating this guy and he had a friend and I met the friend maybe two days prior to being injured and um I was outside the wrong time. My mom had um, would get off of work kind of late and it was in October. So the time was changing early. And she said, do not go outside until I get home. Well, I was like, by the time you get home, it's going to be dark. So I left a note saying, I'm outside. This is where I'm going to be. And I left. And I just happened to be out in front of the apartments. And um, the guy that I was dating, his friend was around. And it was just really an act of nonsense. And he um, actually shot me in the back of, my, of the neck and he left me there to die. And so um, I was really close to death, but um, like I said, I am a Christian. So I did pray and my life was spared. And so now I just, I know that that's a part of my testimony. I know that's a part of my destiny and my purpose. And so with that, that's how I live. I know I'm still here for a reason. So, yeah. Wow, thank you so much. Um, I appreciate you just being super open and vulnerable and sharing that with us. And you are literally a walking testimony, you know, um, because you did not die, right? You're here today and you have um, so much more things to do for God's kingdom. Uh, and so I'm, I'm excited to be here with you, talking to you, um, being able to connect with you. And I know everyone watching as well, really, really touched by your testimony and just that you 
push forward. You said, this is not going to be the end of Courtney, right? Um, I'm going to take right. this and I'm going to push forward and that God will get the glory even out of this. And so thank you so much for, for sharing that with us. And as someone who um, is a wheelchair user, what's the biggest misconception you feel like um, people have? of people who um, are wheelchair users and how does it affect your day-to-day -day life? So the main misconception for me is that because I'm disabled, I'm not able. And I'm determined to not be defined by ableism. So I, my, my um, perspective is I'm valuable, I'm capable, despite the disability. And it's important for, for people to see that. So, yeah. I love that. Valuable and capable. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so tell us about your Pushing Pretty movement. When did it start? What is it? Um, how can we learn more about it? Tell us about Pushing Pretty. Okay, so Pushing Pretty was started last year on YouTube and um, I realized that I would get a lot of questions from people and they really thought that they were ignorant questions. And they would, a lot of times people would say, oh, forgive me if I ask a stupid question concerning your injury. And what I realized was because I haven't always been in a wheelchair or a been a wheelchair user, there was a lot of stuff that I was ignorant about as well. So I felt like I wanted to bridge the gap between those that are able-bodied and those that are wheelchair users by just kind of putting myself out there into the spotlight and just saying, okay, yeah, there is a learning curve and it's okay to be misinformed about something and you can actually learn about it. And here I am to kind of teach you about it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm the same girl that I was when I was on my feet. I just walk different. I just use wheels now, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I want to kind of give people a glimpse into my life so they can see that there's layers to Courtney Lane. There's layers to different types of disabilities. This just happens to be the disability that, that, that I have. And here is how I go throughout life with it. I love that. Awesome. And so with that platform, we're able to learn more about wheelchair users. We're able to kind of like be a part of your journey to see yeah. how you how you go through life. What are the things that you do, don't do, like to do and learn more about you as a person. And so I love that you have this platform because like you said, usually when there's a label placed on you, people kind of just focus on that aspect of you, not realizing that there's so many layers, so many facets to who you are. And so we get to learn about the whole person, right? Your personality, right. <laughs> things that- Multifaceted. Not right, just, your personality, you things you do. Disability. I yeah. love that. I love that. Because I, um, I love your platform and I have to be honest, I've learned yeah. a lot too by watching. And um, for <laughs> instance, like something as simple as driving a car, right? Um, some people would think, oh, that's not possible, but it absolutely is. And so we just mm -hmm. get to- just see, just see your day-to-day -day life. And also too, if there's anybody who has somebody in your life who has a disability, maybe this could also help you understand how to connect with them Absolutely. more to understand their way of thinking, maybe some questions to ask, not to ask, right? <laughs> and just mm -hmm. having an understanding mm -hmm. and seeing them as the multi-layered person that they are. So I love yeah. that. Um, and so with the um, Pushing Pretty movement, what is the biggest takeaway you would like for viewers to be able to, to take away? The biggest takeaway is I am not my chair. I'm not, I'm not the disability. I'm a human being just like anyone else. Anything you can do, I can do it. I'm just going to do it differently. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. So guys, make sure you are heading over to YouTube and subscribing and supporting the Pushy 
the pushing, <laughs> pushing pretty uh, channel and platform. Um, there you're going to find Courtney Elaine. And so how can we stay in touch with you, Courtney? How can we follow you? What are your social media handles so we can go ahead and do that? So I'm um, pushing pretty on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. And I'm also um, under the Courtney Elaine brand on Instagram and Facebook. And there you'll be able to see some of the different things that I do outside of Pushing Pretty. Love it, love it. Thank you so much. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with us um, before we, we close on out? <laughs> so one of the things I'm very passionate about is graphic design. And I love networking with people. So I'm planning a networking event in November. So connecting with me on social media will be one of the ways that you find out about the networking event here in Houston. Awesome. Love it. Thank you so much, Courtney. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for hanging out with us and everybody watching. Thank you for uh, watching another segment of the Masterpiece Lounge with Chris Natha. I'm your hostess, Chris Natha DeRozier, certified life coach, author, and speaker. Thank you for hanging out with us, Courtney. Thank you once again. And we will see you all really soon. And until then, be well. <laughs>